Hello and welcome to the pCounter Client Print Pop-Up Churning video. The point of this video is to help you decide which pCounter Client you need to use for your workstation users, as well as how to configure each for communication with the pCounter server. With pCounter for Windows version 2.60 and newer, the pCounter pop-up clients have changed considerably. Additionally, the Pro Web services that previously ran in IIS have been fully integrated into the pCounter services. The new clients themselves are located in the pCounter installation directory on the server at C program files pCounter for NT NT client. There are three clients in the directory. The first client we will cover is the ppopup.exe. This is a standard Windows domain pCounter client. It uses RPC to connect to the pCounter server and typically does not require any special configuration for communication. When the client itself is executed on the user workstation or on the server, it will place a small printer icon in the taskbar. If you right-click this icon and select Preferences, you can see the active server connection. If the user's workstation is already has at least one printer connection to the pCounter server, then no configuration is needed, and you will see your pCounter server listed in the Preferences with the status of OK. If you cannot see your server, or you need to use one of the many command line options available for the pCounter clients, then you must use the pCounter client INI in combination with the ppopup exe. This pCounter client INI is covered in detail in the next section of the video after the pCounter client exe explanation. Next we have the pCounter client.exe. This is the new HTTPS ppopup client. It requires the client IP ports be configured in the services ports area of pControl. First, go to the go to pControl services and ports. The default ports are 7443 and 6443. If that must be changed, do so now, then stop and start the services to accept the change. Second, confirm the ports are listening by doing a net stat space hyphen A. Look in the list to confirm both ports and their current status. Third, if using a firewall, you must open the ports, the defaults are 7443 and 6443, both TCP and UDP. Finally, in the pCounter client exe itself, specify the port value for the printer control service client IP port. By default, it will use 7443. When the client itself is executed on the user workstation or the server, it will place a small printer icon in the taskbar. If you right-click this icon and select Preferences, you can see the active server connection. If the user's workstation has at least one printer connection to the pCounter server, you are using the default HTTPS port, and the port is open and listening, then no additional configuration should be needed, and you should see the pCounter server listed in the Preferences with the status of OK. If you do not see your server in the list, or you need to use one of the many command line options available in the pCounter clients, then you can use the pCounter Client INI, which we will cover now. The pCounter Client INI is a way to force a number of special options in the ppopup exe and pCounter Client exe. First, open the pCounter win.pdf document located in the pCounter installation directory on the server and go to page 39. Here is a full listing of all the options available to the pCounter client INI. Here is an example INI file that I have created where I am forcing a server connection using the servers area and ignoring a non-pCounter server, then forcing a non-default HTTPS port in the preferences area. Notice when I execute the ppopup exe that is located in the directory with the INI file, the options are forced. However, if I close that instance at the pop-up and open a ppopup exe that is not located in the directory with the INI file, it launches with default settings. Finally, we have the pCounter client.dmg. This is the new HTTPS Mac ppopup client. It is identical to the pCounter client exe in regards to server communication. It requires a similar configuration process. First, verify the ports are set in pControl, services, and ports. Then, confirm the ports are listening using netstat. Then, open the ports on any firewalls that exist. And finally, configure the port value in the client itself. The pCounter client INI cannot be used with the pCounter client.dmg 
for the Mac workstations. However, most of the options available in the INI are already included in the DMG file itself. To view the special configuration options available in the Mac client, first copy the client to the Mac workstation from the server, then confirm the client is not running by checking the for the printer icon in the taskbar, then hold down the special options key on the Mac keyboard and launch the client. You will be presented with the client configuration window. The Mac client itself is going through a re-engineering phase and this configuration interface will in particular will likely be changed completely. The only options you should concern yourself with for now are the server connection and HTTPS port configuration options. Just like the pCounter client exe, the HTTPS port setting in the client configuration window must match exactly with that of the pCounter printer control service client IP port in the pControl services and ports area. This concludes the pCounter client print pop-up training video. If you are needing to distribute the client of your choice at this time, please go to pcounter.com forward slash support and search for ppopup distribution using the search window. If you have any questions, please email pcounter technical support at support at pcounter.com. Thank you and have a good day.